Uh, I, I don't recommend you going into debt to buy this either, you know. But all, all I can say is um, get as much as you can, as quickly as you can, and squirrel it away and don't tell anybody where it's at. You know, and don't put it in the bank. Do not put it in a, in a that's, that's the number one cardinal rule. Because the first thing, if they shut down, there might be bank auditors and say, hey, I, you know, we think you've got something here of value and they may want to tax it or they may want to confiscate it. And by the way, there's no guarantee that you can, you, this stuff won't be confiscated. Am I going to give mine up? Yeah, I might give them a few here. But the rest of this is going to be buried somewhere, I hope. <laughs> um, gold. Let's talk about gold. Uh, numismatic gold, and people have called me, do I, do I want to spend $5,000 on a single numismatic coin, or do I want to put it into uh, uh, gold bullion? And, and I said, well, I said, I'm in the coin business, so if you like to collect, that's one thing. I have I have a few coins that are valuable, and uh, I don't I don't want to sell them. I'll I'll die with them probably. You know, uh, I'm looking to buy a ten or fifteen thousand dollar dime right now. Well, that's crazy in, in what I've just told you guys, but mm -hmm. but it's something that has historical value. You know, now remember this: that collectibles and antiquities, and art and that kind of thing has, if you know the market on this stuff, it is okay to, to own, but you better be sure of what you've got and know that it is really valuable. For instance, some, some Nazi uh, war paintings, you know, that were stolen from the Jews are now uh, the Museum of Austria is having to settle a deal right now for about $1.9 million because of a painting that got into their museum and, and a family claimed it and that kind of thing. But that's a very valuable piece. So those are unique circumstances. But back to coin collecting, if you like collecting, that's one thing. And that, you know, it's my passion. And it's what got me into all of this stuff here. But <coughs> back to gold, do I, do I buy the numismatic, which is about the same value as a one ounce piece, this is not quite an ounce, but it sells for about the same money, maybe a little bit premium, a premium over the American Gold Eagle, which is a $50 coin. And it has to have a value to be a coin, okay? Uh, <coughs> excuse me. That's why they so gave it a $50 yeah. value. Now these, these are the higher premium coins right here, what I'm showing you. And there's a whole series of these and you pay a little bit more as you go down, in other words, these are about 180. Uh, I think Kitco's got them for about 180 bucks. I sell them for a, yeah, maybe the, maybe 185. That's a one tenth ounce. Here's a quarter ounce. It sells. It's got about 375 dollars worth of gold at 1500 dollars, and and I get 395 dollars for them. Okay, that's that's the quarter ounces, and these these I always get close to a hundred dollars, sometimes ninety dollars an ounce, depends on how much where the market's at, how bad I need the money, and that kind of thing. But but it's roughly a hundred dollars, sometimes a little less. And these are about um, about a ten percent, maybe not quite a ten percent premium, which is a collector piece. This is a nineteen oh nine, and it's got about a hundred and fifty dollar premium. So it's got about a $50 premium, but remember you're not getting a full ounce, but these still trade. Even well circulated ones, this is a $10 gold piece, but they make 20s well circulated. Uh, they still sell for a little bit of a premium over the gold price, which makes this about $750. Okay, and, and this, this is the cheapest gold, some of the cheaper gold that you can buy. This is a recognizable Polavi, it's a half Polavi, that's, that's the Shah of Iran, of course Iran is out of favor, and I buy these for a little bit back, like 97.5%, and I sell them for about 8-10% to premium over gold, so it's not a big deal, it's about 150 about $175 worth of gold right there, so it's, a, it's 11 point. so, you know, you can do that, and then this is some more of that and, and that. 
And the cheapest gold, and I don't, I don't handle these. I don't, don't like them all that much. Uh, this is a, this is a hundred gram Swiss credit bar, and some people know about those. Be sure you always get the certificate of, of them if, if mm -hmm. it's available. It's not always necessary. But this, this is um, uh, something that is on the market and available. And uh, that's, that's about, oh, uh, what? There's three and a half ounces. It's about a $4,000 piece, $5,000 piece laying out there just in gold. And they make smaller ones of these, but I don't recommend that you get the smaller th that you buy, the less, the more premium that you have to pay. But if you needed 50 bucks, why don't go cash in a $5,000 gold piece just to have 50 or $100 mm -hmm. in cash? You know, so anyway, that's, that's pretty much the. You have any questions? Uh, I mean, I'd be glad to okay. give it to you. Okay, how come it's grams? Grams. You you, that's, you uh, normally buy and sell in grams or ounces? Well, there's always 31.1 grams in an ounce. Okay. okay. How that's, much? 31? That's a good thing to know for everybody, just what? in case you... How you much? 31.1 grams. It's carried out a little further than that, but it's, okay. it's basically 31.1 grams. And uh, these were made strictly for gold investors. And I bought this over the counter the other day. At, uh, the guy jumped right on it when I said gold was $1,511 and I paid 97 per, 97 and a half percent of spot. By the way, when I get gold melted, you know, you sell me a class ring or, or a necklace or something like that, my, my uh, smelters uh, pay me 98 percent. A pure amount, whatever, whatever comes up, I get 98 uh, percent for that. So I paid within a half a percent of what I could melt it for, and that's basically what it is. But I will sell this in case somebody wants to buy it for about 35 dollars over spot. So it ends up being one of these gold bars ends up being about a hundred dollars over the price of gold spot. So he he he, he jumped on it. Was he knew the gold was 1507 and I bought it at 1511 and so he knew he was making money. Yeah, yeah. And that's got roughly uh, a thousand grams you divide it by 31.1 and you get you know, more value. So interesting there. Is it easier to get rid of uh, cougar ants over American eagles? It's a, yeah, but you don't get necessarily uh, the same value. Krugerrands are cheaper to, to buy and, are, and, they, and a lot of people are, are discounting them a little bit, you know, off of them. They will leave. Generally, up until now, I've been paying spot for them and uh, I've noticed that some of the dealers now with the price being as high as it is and they're, they're beginning to spread, uh, they're beginning to make their margins a little wider, you know, to protect themselves a little bit. So most all the time you can get within 95 to 97. If they if they want to buy it for less than 95 percent, they're they're getting to you a little mm -hmm. bit. But you're only talking a few dollars there, you know. At, uh, at let's say spot is just it's right at 1480, I think today. But let's use 1500 dollars for round figures. So 95 percent of 1500 is 1425 dollars. Now, uh, as opposed to, uh, see, if you walk in with five Kruger ends and I don't have anywhere to go with it, I, I would probably offer you 97%, you know, and uh, you get $1,455. Well, you know, if I lay it off, the best I'm going to do is probably make $20 a coin on it, you know, so uh, it, it's, not a, it's not a big money maker, you know, for me. Well, some time ago, I bought uh, some tenth ounce, or tenth, yeah, one tenth uh -huh. Kugrams. Yeah. Uh, so I need something small to. Right. Work yeah. With. And 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 by the way, this, the the more of these little guys that you've got here, you know, the uh, the better it is to to piece piece them out. Like if you got a gang of guys, here's my here's my stash, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, there's only one piece here. You yeah. want more. <laughs> so, anyway.
gosh, I've been talking for an hour here. And any questions? Uh, when you said that earlier, Richard, the 31.1 ounce, is that compared to the Troy ounce? That's Troy, yeah. Okay. All metals are traded in Troy, uh, precious metals anyway. Okay. Uh, if we're talking about steel or you know aluminum or something like that, it's in the it's in the pound, but you know, but basic precious metal is traded in, in Troy as opposed to Auburn to pour, and that's something that you need to know too is that there is a difference in weight. Say for instance, this, some of these I didn't bring it, but some of these coins and some of the silver is marked like one pound of silver. Well, they only weigh 14 ounces. If you put them on the scale and divide it by 31.1, okay. you get like 14 ounces, as opposed to uh, met uh, Auburn de Poor, which is 16. You know, difference between uh, metric and uh, Auburn de Poor, or you know, the, I guess it would be an English pound. Okay. When it comes to uh, you know, we talked about as well as Mike touched on a lot this week. Um, and you talked about it just a moment ago, uh, bearing. Uh, there's nothing as far as the gold and the silver as far as it, what we bury it in or how we package it that would be a detriment to the metal? You can just lay this stuff right in the ground by itself. It won't hurt it. This can stay in the ground for a thousand years and you'll put it up and it'll look just like that a thousand years from now. As a matter of fact, it won't it, it won't. It, it shouldn't. Now it's got 10% alloy, but a pure coin like this, this piece right here, it'd probably have dirt and crud and stuff and a thousand years from now, you can just wipe it off and it'll be just as shiny as that. That's one of the properties that gold has over all other metals and platinum, by the way. Platinum is the same. As a matter of fact, they have found gold coins at the bottom of the ocean have been there four or 500 years um, and they're just as nice and new. Now silver is different. Uh, you need to protect your silver a little bit, but it won't in a matter of months. It won't in a matter of years. As a matter of fact, the worst it could do, it could get a little etching, but uh, I, I, would, I would protect it just for, you know, get you a double baggie of, of uh, plastic. Now that, that plastic bag will lay in the ground for 10 years without, you know, deteriorating. If it doesn't have any holes and, and water doesn't get into the coin, they'll be, they'll look just like this. So, you know, hopefully this thing, it, what, what's going on, we won't have to leave it there for more than a few months anyway, maybe a couple of years at, at most, but containers like that, heavy plastic wrapped around them would be, be just fine. But if nothing else, Put them in plastic bags that you've got in your cabinet, you know, sandwich lab bags, bags yeah. sandwich bags, anything, you know, uh, to help protect it. Okay, when, okay, like, okay, now these are just rounds. Yeah, that's one ounce. And, and by the way, make sure that your rounds are marked, you know. All, all uh, uh, it will be a lot easier to trade out. It says, this says one quarter ounce of 0.999 silver. Northwestern Territory uh, mint silver. So coin. if it gets tarnished or something, there's no big deal. No, no tarnish on silver uh, can be taken off with this household ammonia. And if you have old coins, mm -hmm. do you want to clean them? No, not necessarily. No. Okay. No, it just Does that be, if it turns out to be a rare coin by yeah, cleaning it, you'll mess it up. Be a rare coin you don't want to clean. 